I've been pushing this M1 Max to its limits for over three years now. So let's discuss what's still impressive and where it's failing. But you may be wondering which MacBook exactly is this? This is the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. This was the base model. So it's got 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD. It came with a 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, and 16 core neural engine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on my desk because my setup just looks better back there with it plugged in. This MacBook has been my one and only device for over three years now. So it's handled everything I've done, which is includes the 4K video editing I do for this channel. And now usually that's not just one 4K footage. It's usually at least two, sometimes three, even up to four, and it handles it like a pro. Like I am amazed at just how well this thing still does that after three years. But not only that, my day job is an app developer. I'm an iOS app developer, so I'm in Xcode all the time, multiple hours every single day, writing code, compiling, testing the apps out and everything. And from the regular M1 series MacBook, like it's insane at how much faster this compiles into the simulator to be able to test out my apps. Like it saves hours every single week on just how much faster this was than the regular M1 or even the predecessor to the M1s. Like it was just night and day at how much better this computer is and it's still amazing even after three years. So I'm editing, I'm coding. I also use a few AI apps. One of them is called Mac Whisper. And the way this thing works is it transcribes all my videos, but not only that, so it gives me that transcription, that subtitles for all the subtitles. Uh, Google does a pretty good job, but I like the way this thing works as well. I can also translate them into other languages, which is really nice, but I also use it with the ChatGPT integration to help me with my video descriptions, my chapter markers, and some tags at the bottom of the video, and then just help me improve for future reference, you know, what should I have done differently in this video? And so all this works really well. And then there's a couple other AI apps that I use. One is to edit photos and another is video editing. And it kind of like, if I have like a bad shot or whatever, and I need to try to improve it, there's this app called Topaz AI Video Editing or something or other, I'm not really sure. Not an ad, not a sponsor for any of these apps. These are just apps that I use all the time. But the, the video one is really the only time I ever hear the fans on this device. So if you remember, like if you can think back to before the M1 was around, or maybe you even have a computer that still doesn't have an M1 chip, I remember hearing the fans all the time when I would code, definitely when I would video edit. And now with video editing, multiple 4K footages, I don't hear it. Like it doesn't even spin up. Even in clamshell mode, which is, you know, when the computer is closed and docked the way I have it, I still rarely ever hear the fan spin up when editing just 4K by itself. But when I use this AI app, man, do they ramp up like crazy. It is insane. I'll put a little clip right here just so you can hear just how crazy it is. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's the only way I know that the fans are still working at all because like I said, it's the only time I hear them. But I just also wanted to talk about the actual casing of the MacBook as well. You'll notice I have a bunch of stickers on it. That was just something I did just to kind of more personalize it. Like I haven't really had too many scratches. There are a few, but you will know that you can see there's like an outline of an Apple sticker. It was coming off and when I ripped it off, it actually removed some of that coating of that space gray material. And so that's something that's like, eh, I kind of like the way it looks, but if I ever decide to remove all these other stickers, it's not gonna be good because it's probably gonna like really hurt this coating. If you are somebody that likes to put stickers on your devices, one thing that I would recommend, and I've done this with my iPads before, get one of those decals, any kind of decal that you like the look of, put that down first over the device, and then stick the stickers on. Because for whatever reason, those decals, when you remove those, 
like whatever material they use is just way better than just the random stickers. Even the Apple sticker. This one was an official Apple sticker that came with an Apple device. So just keep that in mind. Learn from my mistakes on this one. And hey, if you found that helpful, hit that thumbs up. Another pain point that just drives me insane, and it's happened on this one, it's happened on multiple in the past as well, is the keyboard. I have the shiny key issue, you probably have heard of it. So that coating on the keyboard itself comes off and it makes you look like you're somebody that just eats a bunch of chips while you're working and stuff. And I promise you, I don't, a lot of times I don't even use the keyboard on this device anymore. I did for a couple years probably, you know, I had it in as like a secondary monitor and keyboard setup underneath like an ultra wide. So I did use it like that for many years, but now it's always just in clamshell mode for most of the time, unless I need to go out and travel with it. But I really hope that Apple kind of figures out what to do to kind of help combat that. If you have any tips on how you have been able to combat that, please let me know in the comments below. Another issue that I've had is with the camera itself. The quality just isn't that good. It's like a 1080p camera. I understand, I don't know how easily that's gonna be able to do because the screen is just so thin on them anyways. But even on my studio displays, it's still just 1080. That's all they give us and it just, just baffles me. I mean, Apple is known for their good video quality and they still just give us 1080p even when they had the room to actually add a good lens. And that's why I use this one right here. And this is not a sponsor. They did send me this one for free, but you know, I can say whatever I want. And I've really enjoyed this. This is the Osbot. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. It's O-B-S-B-O-T. This is the Meat 2. It's so small. Just look at how small that is. And very thin, easily portable. It has a USB connector on the back and a tripod connector underneath. So if you want to have it off to the side or however, it also has magnets built in. So I'm a sucker for anything with magnets. So you can easily mount it. It comes with like a little mount stand. I also just 3D printed my own just because I like things to be as clean and sleek as possible. So I use the other one for when I travel. So I decided to break in because I figured rather than just tell you about how awesome this camera is, why not just show you? So I'm putting them side by side. And the first thing you may notice is that the Osbot camera has way better framing. And that's because it has that center stage style auto framing built in. So even if I move my chair back a little bit, you can see it reframes the shot to make sure it keeps me fully in frame and kind of centered in frame as well. But once I go back forward, right back to it. And the other thing you may notice is just the artifacts that might show up in the MacBook Pro's camera, just because, you know, one, it's not 4K, it's just 1080p, but also, you know, the lighting right now is actually pretty good, like I'm using my studio lights, but if I turn them down a ton, you will really start to see the artifacts that appear on the MacBook Pro's camera. So whereas the Ozbot still looks really, really well. And that concludes the show and tell portion of this video. You can also shoot in vertical mode if you want, which is kind of, kind of cool. If you're doing like a FaceTime or whatever on your computer, you can do that. And if you're worried about privacy, they have like a little magnetic, once again, sucker for those magnets, a magnetic cover to cover up the camera itself. Now, right now they are having a sale on this. So if you act quickly, because I'm uploading super last minute for their sale, you can get up to like 20, 21% off the meat to, it's from March 25th to March 31st. So be sure I'll put the link and the promo code is OBSBOT2025. I'll put all that in the description if you're interested. Another issue that also I wish I would have realized that and tried to prevent is my screen itself. It has scratch marks on my screen from where the trackpad is and where the keyboard is. And I'm not sure how this has really happened. I don't know if I just have it too tight in my bag at times or whatever, but I know for sure whenever I am ready to upgrade my computer, I'm going to get a screen protector 
for my MacBook screen, just to kind of prevent this from happening in the future. I mean, this screen is super high quality. It's that Retina XDR whatever screen, and it's very expensive as well. And the fact that the keyboard and the trackpad area has actually left like a, a scratch mark in there, hurts really bad. Now, luckily for me, I do have Apple Care. So my plan is, is when time comes with other issues, I'm gonna just go ahead and ask them to replace that as well. But for many, I'm sure if you have ran into this issue and you don't have Apple Care, you're just out of luck. There's no, like, if you go to replace the screen, you almost might as well just buy a whole computer at this point. I'm definitely gonna be getting screen protectors on my Mac. I never really saw a use case for them before, just because, you know, I have one on my phone. I used to never use it on there as well, but I finally found one I liked. So I started using it on there, but the Mac, I'm like, it's closed, it's protected, but I never thought of it getting scratched by itself. So keep that in mind. So if you're in the market or you're wanting one, maybe look for a screen protector to put on there. I mean, I'm guessing they're probably not all that much and you can just swap them out as they scratch. Much cheaper option than actually getting the screen scratched itself. Now, I did kind of mention that I was waiting on a few other things before I did the Apple Care. One of those things is the battery itself. So right now I'm at 86% battery health. So once I believe, once I get under 80, I can have Apple Care actually just replace it for free. So I'm kind of holding off, waiting for that, and then that's what I'm gonna ask for the screen. But I will say, I feel like the battery has held up really well. I mean, three years, still at 86%, especially with the way I use it and keep it plugged in all the time. Like this thing is plugged in probably at least 80% of the last three years. Yeah. That seems kind of a lot, right? So why do I even have a laptop? Well, it's because of those other 20%. Sometimes I have to go out of town. Sometimes I'll just take it when I go pick up the kids from school because I pick up one and then we have to wait a little while and then I pick up the other. And in those cases, you know, I still have to work. I still have to get stuff done. And the laptop just still is the better option. Trust me, I've been looking at the Mac Studio ever since it came out. And I would absolutely love that device. And I really wanna to try to figure out a way to justify getting it. But as of right now, it just doesn't make sense because I still need that 20% portability. And in that case, you know, the M1 Max is an amazing machine to get that done. Now, I also will say when I'm talking about portability, the 16 inch may have been a little bit of an overkill size for me. It's very nice. It's nice to have, especially with coding. Like when you're coding, all the space you can get, you need it. Whenever I do decide to upgrade, I will probably be getting that 14 inch instead. So after these three years, what is some of the stuff that I would actually wish Apple would change? One is the hard drive space. I have one terabyte hard drive on there and you know, it does work pretty well. It's not awful, but it's also not the best. It fills up all the time. And I'm glad I didn't go lower, that's for sure. But I really wish I would have went higher two terabytes probably even four would have been really, really nice, but Apple charges so much for space and you can't upgrade it after the fact. So you will notice corner of my MacBook, there is this little black metal piece and that's just a metal plate so that I have a couple hard drives that are magnetic that I can just pop on there and then connect. And this has been game changer. I feel like I could probably do it even better than this to make it a little more secure, but it works really well. And with doing that, now I have a little extra hard drive space, but I still wish that my main hard drive was at least a two terabyte. So next time I'm gonna be upgrading, I'm definitely looking into that. One other thing that really doesn't matter, but it's still just, I just don't like the look of it on the side of the MacBook is the HDMI port. Like I still wish Apple would just do away with it or at least change it to maybe like the micro HDMI or something. And I know that gets people really, really angry. Like they get mad because I mentioned this when I first got it or in my one year review or whenever it was. And people are like, no, I love that. I use it all the time. Well, I've still yet to use it after three years. Like I don't need it. 
I think it's really ugly. I wish it could be something else. Like even just another SD card reader. Like I use that more than anything on this device. That is amazing. I love having access to that. And that's just a little slot. This thing is like this, it takes up like the whole side and I just think it's ugly. Now, I know the M4s are out now, and a lot of people are saying that it's finally worth the upgrade. The M2 and the M3 really weren't enough performance to get you that upgrade, but the M4, a lot of people seem to think it is. I still don't see a reason to, because this thing still does amazingly well at everything I throw at it. So I'm gonna save that money for at least another year. And if you're in that same boat as I am, and you're looking for one, you can actually find these on eBay for about $1,300 to $1,400 now. These things originally cost $3,500. So after taxes, you're looking at about $3,700. And I'll be honest, I bought mine from eBay. I bought mine about two months after the original release and I saved almost six, seven hundred dollars on mine. If you want to save some money, I'll put some links down below to them on eBay and I'll also put the store just in case they have some because if you can find a reputable seller, you know, I wouldn't worry one bit about buying a device off eBay. Just throwing that out there just to try to help if you're in the market but you want to save some money. Like this is the device to get because it does insanely well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. God bless.